Hi, this is Kevin with Matt Practical. This is part two of the Lubric Forest uh, Spatial Analysis. Um, we've already done quite a few selections. As you can see here, we're all the way up to step number seven with our cut blocks. We still have the original cut block selected, but here's a good opportunity to show you if you'd saved and closed and you reopened your ArcMap document and you didn't have these selections. So I'm going to clear the selections. So there goes all of my red. All right, and close this attribute table. And we don't need the sample points anymore because we already used those. Um, so let's say you've made this some kind of a mistake where you don't have the right answer, um, but you've been exporting these out every time you get the right answer. So I'm going to turn off the original cut blocks and then turn on cut blocks number seven. And uh, let's see, change its color so it shows up as something different. There's that. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and open it up its attributes, or excuse me, its uh, properties and go to selection and change it so it shows up with a red selection as well. There we go. Great. Um, all right, so and if we open the attribute table for that guy, so we've got 207. That was the right answer for number um, seven. Uh, but so we can continue the analysis, what we would have to do is the drop down here and say select all. So now it represents the original cut blocks with 207 selected. And now we can move on and keep working with our analysis. Okay? All right. So let me take a look at the instructions. Now the thing we want to do is select the slope class. So we're going to take a look at the attribute uh, selection here for seven. And we're going to go down to slope class. So it's SLP class. We're going to double click on that one. And we're going to say equals and get unique values. Oh, this is a double one. So actually, instead of equals, I'm going to use in a parentheses, right? And the instruction said we want to only harvest on slopes from 0 to 15%. So we're going to need the 0 to 4 category, and then a comma, and then the 5 to 15 category. And then we're going to hit apply. Great, and that took us down to 70. So now we have 70 of these guys selected, and that's the right answer. Um, that's the answer for number 8. And so we're going to export that one out. Data, export data. Put it into our feature data set and call it cut blocks number 8. Save and OK. And yes, add it to the map, but we're going to turn it off because we don't need it. It's just a backup in case we make another mistake, right? So now we're working with cut block 7 only. All right. Um, next thing we need to do is we're going to compare it to the roads, right? So we need all of the blocks that we're going to cut to be within 100 meter of a road. So we're going to go up to selection, select by location. And this time we're not working with the original cut blocks anymore. We're working with cut block seven. So you got to make sure you change that here. Okay. Um, and there's one other little trick. Instead of removing it, we're going to select it from the currently selected features. And that's an important part of this. We're not going to compare it to the sample points anymore. We're going to compare it to the road classes. And we're going to say are within a distance of the source layer. And in this case, it's 100 meters. All right. So once all that is set, we can hit OK. And 49 are left now in the cut blocks. And that's the right answer. So for number 9, 49 cut blocks are left. I'm going to export those out. So number 9, save, add. And again, those are just a backup. All right, we only have one more selection to do. I've already showed you how to recover if you make a mistake. You just have to open the last one you had correct, select all from the attribute table, and then keep moving on. So the last thing we want to compare to is the streams, right? We want to stay out of the riparian areas, so select by location. We're still working with cut block seven, but in this particular one, we're going back to remove from currently selected features of cut block seven. We're going to compare it to our streams, perennial, right? And it's still within a distance, but in this case, it's within 20 meters. We got to really, we're within 20 meters of a stream. We're not going to cut that block, okay? And we're going to let it rip, and boom, there we are. We're down to 33. So that's the answer for number 10, 33 final cut blocks. And so that's what we're going to call this one when we export it. Data, export data. And this is going to be final. Final cut blocks. Super. All right, so now I can turn off number seven. Actually, I'm just going to clear all selections, close this attribute table. I'm going to turn off cut block seven. I'm going to make the final cut block stand out. 
So what if I gave them a red fill and maybe a darker red stroke? All right, so there we go. Those are our 33 cut blocks that meet all the criteria that we specified. Pretty cool. So let's save it. And now we only have a few more things to do, okay? All right, so now we got our final cut blocks. We're gonna open the attribute table. And I make this one a little bit bigger so we can see some things here. And if we scroll over, we can find a, uh, an attribute that's called prime SPP, and that stands for prime species. And what these represent are the different species that are inside those cut blocks, those 33. And so we're gonna create a chart that tells us the overall number of acres of the, the different species for these particular cut blocks, right? So we're gonna right click on prime species and go down to summarize. And it's gonna uh, summarize that field. We're gonna open up our area here and tell it to sum all of the fields area. So we'll get a specific um, amount for each one. And then we're gonna save this thing to our geo database. And we're gonna call it like prime SPP. And you could even throw sum on there so you know it's a summary. And this is just gonna create a table, okay? And we'll let it rip. And yes, we wanna add it to the map. And it's gonna place it over here in the table of contents. And if we right click on it and say open, it'll open here. And so there we go. Now we've got this all figured out. So um, the prime species, if we take a look at the statistics, there should be 33, yep. So 33 cut blocks are right there. And uh, of those 33, 15 of them are DF, which stands for Doug Fir, right? 16 of them are PP, which stands for uh, Ponderosa Pine, and two of them are WL, which stands for Western Larch. And then there's their different areas, all right? Um, we're gonna create a graph now that we're gonna put into our layout. But it's probably a good idea at this point to get into layout view. So for just a second, I'm gonna close this attribute table. I'm gonna go to the layout view. And we're gonna to have to change this up. This thing will be better in a portrait view, excuse me, in a landscape view. So we're gonna go down to page and print setup and tell it we want landscape just with that radio button. So there we go, but our data frame is still off. I'm gonna go ahead and set some guides at half inch margins. Eight and then a half inch down here. And then I'm gonna pull our data frame lock it into those guides and it snaps right to them and I can make this thing full size and then I'm gonna right click on my floor stands and say zoom to layer and that's about as big as it can be maybe I'll do it to yeah that's all right and I'll go ahead and zoom in a couple more and maybe pull her down I could get my hand tool right to move the data yep there we go so that's about as big as it can be it's at 1 to 80,000 that's pretty good okay back to my regular tool and now I can open up that prime species table again. And I can make this a little bit smaller. And we're going to go under the table options and down to create graph. And we're looking for a vertical bar graph. And um, we're going to change it to some area, right? So that's the, the field here. And then the X field optional, we're going to go with prime species. And then that label is going to be prime species. Great. Um, I don't want to have a legend, so I'm going to uncheck legend here. And then this color scheme I don't really like, so I'm going to go to palettes. And there's a bunch of different options here, but the one that's most like a, a forest for me is kind of that. And it kind of works out Western Larch's orange like it would be in the fall. Okay. And if you hit next, then we can change some things. Like we can change the title to be um, something like cut block species, species right? I always put an extra A in there. Let's see, there we go, cut block. Oh, I got a lot of extras. There's not an A in there either. There we go. Um, graph legend, nope, we don't want that. And then the, the left title here is just gonna be acres. And the bottom is gonna be prime species. Oops. All right, excellent. And then we'll hit finish. Great, and I can close the table now. So we have this floating um, window here, and this is our graph. And there's a number of ways we can get it into our layout. 
So if you right click on it and say add to layout, that usually works, but I've been coming up with some strange black boxes on it, which I don't really like. So I haven't been using that, so I'm just gonna hit delete. Um, and then I'm gonna right click on it again and go to copy as a graphic. And then over in white space off the map, I'm just gonna hit paste. So right click and paste, and then it'll paste it in there. Now it still has that extra background, which I haven't been able to figure out, but it doesn't show up in the map. So you can resize it, get it where you want it. There we go. That's pretty good down there. And then see, you can't see that extra bit of it. So that's how you get that onto your uh, map. And now we can close this guy. Very good. Um, all right, so now we're getting really close. There's one last thing that I want you to calculate, okay? And it's going to be the total um, board feet of the basal area. So if you cut these 33 cut blocks, how much lumber would you get out of it? So to do that, we're going to um, we're going to make a new field. So we're going to go up to our cut blocks, open the attribute table, and add a field. Call it basal area. All right, and we'll make it a double. And I'd go for double because then it's plenty of decimal places, right? And then we're going to go over all the way over to the right, and it'll be over there. And then we're going to use the field calculator to calculate it. Okay, so basal area is going to equal, well, what is it going to equal? Well, let's take a look. If we look back into that metadata document, and instead of searching for uh, stand age, we search for basal area. And there's a number of them, so you might have to go next, next, next. I think three or four times, and then yes, here we go. No, nope. let's see, where is it? Okay, there we go, BFBA. I should have typed in BFBA, that would have been better. BFBA would have got us there. That's the coded value in the attribute table. And if we get to here and we look at this next page, you can see that it's a coded value. So basal area, right, is a measure of the average basal area per acre. Okay, so what we're getting here is it's the coded value 06 doesn't stand for six square feet per acre, it stands for 60. So it's by a factor of 10, and you need to know that for the calculation. So to calculate it out, basal area is going to equal area times BFBA, right, and then times 10 to change it from that, um, from that coded value. Hit OK, whammo, and there we go. So there's our basal area, and if we right click on that and take a look at statistics, then 41,303 square feet, or board feet, excuse me, of lumber is what you would get out of cutting these 33 cut blocks. And I ask you to put a little text of that on the map so I can just right click and say copy, all right? And I can close all this. And now you're here in your layout and you're ready to go. So I'm just going to go insert text and it'll put it right in the middle where I can't see it, but that's okay. And then paste that value in there. And then I'm going to say uh, board feet of lumber, right? And we'll drag that up here as a note, right? Oh, it'd be probably a good idea to throw a comma in there. It just makes it easier for people to read. Great. And if, uh, if I wanted to make my map look a little nicer, I'd get in there and change the font to make it look better. Um, and then I would add a title and so on and so forth. And actually, at this point, I can just go back to our original map that I had from the beginning. And after you add a title and the, the board feet of lumber uh, text note, you've got your uh, chart of your prime species. I do want you to add a legend and a scale bar. Definitely put your name on the map. And this is what we're looking for for our final map, okay? All right, so that's the end of this uh, tutorial. Uh, this is the Lubric uh, spatial analysis looking at uh, timber sales and figuring out how many cut blocks meet a large list of criteria. If this was a helpful video for you, please like it and subscribe to my channel. That'll uh, be helpful for me. All right, thanks a lot and have a great day.